Hare Krishna. So, dear devotees, uh, from the last two weeks, I've not been able to take class. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to record at least the concluding part of the seventh chapter so that you all can view this at your own convenience. I'm extremely sorry. My mother's health was also not too well. And uh, tomorrow also I'm traveling to Ahmedabad uh, because there's an immediate death of my family member uh, in my family. So, I'm traveling to Ahmedabad. So, I'm just going to record actually the remaining concluding part of the seventh chapter that is there from 26 shloka. Give me a minute. I'll just share the screen with you all. So we'll just start with Mangla Charan. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakhaya Chakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamam. Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam. Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vidanta Swami Niti Namine. Namaste Sarasate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunivari. Pashchata Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadada, Shivasadi Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Guru Vegaur, Chandraya, Radhikaya, Tadalaya, Krishnaya, Krishna Bhaktaya, Tad Bhaktaya, Namo Namaha, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So the last time that we saw was, uh, Krishna reserves the right of not revealing himself to everybody. And uh, the Lord is not covered by Maya. But because our vision of the Lord is covered by Maya. And the Lord's knowledge is not covered. Because why? The Lord knows the past, present and future of everything and of everyone. And in this particular section from the 26th shloka to the 30th shloka, the Supreme Lord is saying that uh, how from the delusion by Maya, you can come out and you can develop devotion to Krishna. So in this 26th shloka, he says that he knows the past, present and future. So he's saying Vedaham Samatitani, Vartamani, Charjuna, Bhavishani, Chabhutani, Matu Vedana, Kashchana. So, I read the translation. I beg apologies. This is not so great. I will read the translation. O oh, Arjuna, as a Supreme Person of God, did I know everything that has happened in the past, all that is happening in the present. And all things are that are yet to come. I also know all living entities, but me, no one knows. So, uh, if you see where he's saying that, Vedaham Samit, uh, Samatitani. Now, what uh, what I'm uh, I'm just uh, requesting everybody that whenever like, y'all are actually hearing this class, you'll have your Bhagavad Gita with y'all. And you'll read the pulpit. Only after reading the pulpit, after reading Srila Prabhupada's pulpit, you'll actually listen to the explanation uh, that uh, I'll be giving as such, right? Because first, if we hear Srila Prabhupada, if we read Prabhupada's pulpit, then the understanding becomes more clearer when you're hearing. Okay. So he's saying that Vedaham Samatitani. Samatitani means completely. And like, uh, the past time. Samatit. Samatit means it's actually complete. If you see the word to word translation also, completely past as such. And then he's saying that Vartamani cha Arjuna. Vartamani means present tense, right? And cha Arjuna, O oh Arjuna. So he says that Arjuna, I know the pa I know the complete past. I know the present tense also. And he says, Bhavishani cha Bhutani. I also know the future. Bhutani. Bhutani means the living entities. So, I know all the living entities also. It's not like that, that okay, in some corner of Hyderabad, if uh, 
Sushil Prabhu is staying, or if uh, uh, His Grace Lakshmi Narayan Prabhu is staying, uh, uh, Krishna does not know them. No, he knows everybody. Oh, if uh, uh, if Mahendra Prabhu is in Bombay, it's not like that. That you know, Krishna does not know. Or if Juhi Mataji is in, um, I'm sorry, Brajani Mataji is in Delhi, he does not. Know. No, it's not like that. He knows every living entity, and he says that. Bhutani Mamutu Veda. So, all the living entities I know. But me, no one knows. Na kashchana. Nobody knows me. So, somebody might say that what is the meaning of no one knows? So, Krishna is saying, okay, people may know me as a historical person. Krishna may. Uh, know me as a person whom some people know as like the supreme lord but they don't understand who actually I am and that can be understood only through devotion of course we'll be discussing this in the 18th chapter as such and at many other places also so Krishna is showing Arjuna that Arjuna you don't worry uh, uh, because you're concerned about what will happen to your relatives. Don't worry about that. You know, I'm assuring you and of course I will take care of that also. And they will get liberation and they will come back to me. And, uh, you know, I have shown you also uh, what even, you know, a, a partial performance of even devotional service can give. So, uh, that can give a very greater result also and one can very wholeheartedly you know engage in devotional service and that is why you know one should not try to do and when one tries to do that he will you know get slowly slowly he will get uh, liberated also at the end he has to get liberation one the one who is uh, executing devotional service uh, to the supreme lord so he is saying that uh, that Vedaham Samatitani. Okay. And uh, so somebody might question that how can Krishna know the future? And uh, this is a very, you know, complex question and nobody can answer. So, see, if we analyze a little bit, what do we mean by future? There are, you know, see, in, you know, in astrology also, people can predict, uh, you know, future. Uh, there are, uh, you know, future antologists also who try to, you know, look at the world and they try to think what will be the future and uh, what will be the future of this person or the uh, the future of that person or what will be the future of the country. Or if you see in the Corona times, in the Corona times that many people uh, had predicted and uh, many people, many astrologists had predicted that uh, Okay, Corona will end during, uh, you know, the uh, Corona will rise in the month of April and May. And the Corona will go on decreasing by September, you know, October as such. And then again, it will rise. So the first wave that came, people predicted. The second wave also that came, people predicted about that. The astrologists predicted about that also. So these are like, you know, future and Andalogist who had predicted about the future so that you know the the society will try to prepare uh, you know accordingly and it will act in a way so astrologers are those people who help uh, people understand that what will be the future of some people or uh, they will have some uh, a little of mystical powers also so all of their areas will be destroyed and ultimately all of them also will be destroyed. We also know that. So, we wanted to know the future so that we can protect ourselves. So, Krishna is saying that I know the future also. So, you know, uh, somebody might say that is it a programmed, uh, you know, pro is it programmed by Krishna that he knows the future or is our future programmed by Krishna? So we have to understand in that way that Krishna's knowledge of future is like our knowledge of the past. 
our knowledge of the past is like the knowledge without any control. So if I want to know what happened yesterday or I wanted to sleep actually for a few hours, but I slept, you know, uh, for uh, a little more hours. I wanted to sleep for say seven hours, but I slept for 10 hours, all right? And I know this, but I cannot change that past now, right? And that is knowledge. I have that knowledge, but that knowledge is without the control. And we can think about the past. We observe the past also, but we can't change that past. So Krishna knowledge about the future and our knowledge about the past, what essentially is meaning is that the conceptions are similar, although there may be some differences also, some, some major differences there, but Krishna's position is, you know, uh, is a difference from us. Even time is his servant. And since time is also his servant, therefore actually speaking, and as time is destroying also all the living beings, so ultimately all the living beings are his servants. So, you know, when uh, in the pastimes of Krishna, where Krishna is going home at the time, at that time, you know, uh, uh, when he's, you know, going from herding the cows and when he's going uh, at that point of time. So, he acts as if he knows what is going to happen. And although he knows his pastime and he knows everything that is going to happen, but he didn't act that way. His goal is not to prove his divinity. His goal is to actually reciprocate with his uh, loving devotees, with his own love. He's reciprocating with his own love, with his loving devotees. So he's saying that, uh, he's saying to Mother Yashoda, Maya, Maya, I am very, you know, hungry. You know, and then, then you know, uh, Yashoda Mai says that, you know, come Krishna, please take a bath and, you know, food is ready for you. Please come and, you know, uh, take all this. So if you see in this beautiful pastime where, you know, Krishna is coming from home and uh, he is uh, telling Mother Yashoda that I'm very hungry, right? And uh, he's saying that, uh, uh, and then when K Mother Yashoda is also, you know, offering Krishna and Balram a very big feast because by the time she has prepared a very big feast and all. So even in, even uh, when Krishna is in the spiritual world, he knows everything. But when performing those pastimes, he forgets that he knows anything. That is how uh, uh, Krishna does certain things to enhance that rasa. He increases the leela of his pastimes. And how does he increase his rasa? How does he increase the leela of his pastimes? By creating a sense of uh, predictability. Which is resolved by his own intervention alone. And how does he do this? So like for example, somebody might be having you know, some issues. So just as like, you know, uh, uh, maybe a student is uh, studying and a student is, uh, the student has a free will that, okay, whether he wants to study or does not want to study. Now when the teacher is observing that student, uh, uh, so it, it's a, like a very rough example. So uh, Krishna will be knowing the teacher may not be knowing, uh, you know, these question answers or, you know, the answers. But the teacher can see. The student will study. And he will develop the educated mind. And there is a culture of hard work also involved. So eventually, uh, to get success on the other side, if the student doesn't do if the student does not study, then what will happen? The student will fail. So, the path, the pathways, you know, they are depending on the pathway, you know, uh, and there is an, there is a result also, which is inevitable. You do this, you will definitely get this result. If you don't do this, 
you will definitely get it. So if you study, you will get good marks. If you don't study, then you will fail. You know, so these results are inevitable. So after that, what Krishna is revealing is something, you know, similar that Krishna is, uh, Krishna is saying that Krishna is God and he can know the future. He can change the future of Krishna. And he can change the future. Of course, Krishna can change the future and uh, doesn't even have to, you know, give us the free will. He can make us act like a robot completely, you know, obeying his command. But, you know, that is that is not what Krishna wants us to do. You know, Krishna is giving us a full freedom by which he allows us to be tested and he allows us to be purified and by that, by seeing how, you know, this tribal, it is to bother about these things. Better bother about, you know, uh, developing our relationship with Krishna. Better focus on uh, developing ourselves spiritually because that alone is going to give us a lasting benefit. Maam to Veda na kacha. So Krishna is throwing a challenge to Arjuna's, you know, spirit. Uh, trying to, you know, direct him away from the fear which is paralyzing Arjuna's thoughts. He's saying that actually why should I fight? He's asking this uh, question. Okay. And Arjuna originally to see with Krishna is replying that why would you why you would not fight now? So Krishna knows the result in future. What is going to happen? So Krishna knows that Arjuna's son Abhimanyu is going to die. Krishna knows that even Jaidra is going to die. But still Krishna is asking Arjuna to fight. To go and fight. Because Krishna's goal is to perform a Leela. And the Leela doesn't mean that people will not use their free will. But we have, you know, these... Uh, trajectories and depending upon these trajectories, there are consequences. So, as a devotee or as devotees, uh, we should not worry unnecessary about these sort of things. What happened to this person and what will happen to me and what will happen to that person. We should just keep on doing our devotional service steadily and eventually... Uh, by Krishna's mercy, by Srila Prabhupada's mercy, by Vaishnava's mercy, the inner presence of Krishna, the inner revelation of Krishna will happen within our you know, hearts. It will happen, but we need to have you know, uh, patience and perseverance. Just keep on going and you know, doing you know, devotional service and then eventually that will definitely happen. So, Krishna is saying that Mamutu Vedana Kashchana, no one knows me. And if you see in the purport also, Prabhupada has given the same cloud example as, as such. So, now in the next loka, what is he saying that? Why does no one know me? So he is saying over here, Maam to no Veda Krishna, no one knows me. So, why no one knows Krishna? It is because of delusion and dualities of dishonor and honor. Misery and happiness or I am a man, I am a woman, he is good, he is bad, you know, this is pleasure, this is pain. So that is why, because of the delusion and these dualities, people do not know Krishna. So the next loka is saying that, Icha dvesha samutthe na dvanda mohe na bharata sarva bhutani sammoham Sarge Yanti Parantapa. So he is saying translation. Uskayan of Bharata, a conqueror of the foe. All living entities are born into delusion, bewildered by dualities arisen from desire and hate. So he is saying over here that Icha, hum jo Ichai karte hai, you know, whatever are our desires, you know. Uh, that is wrong. That is why he is saying that Sammohan is saying. No, so he is saying that Icha Dvesha Samuthena because of desire and because of Dvesha, aversion, because of attachment and aversion and Samuthena together, you know, that is tied 
you can say timed samutthena. So there is delusion. And if you see, there are two kinds of delusion. Okay. Dvanda mohena bharatam. Uh, where there is no dvanda, then what happens? That dvanda is the cause of suffering for all living beings. This sarva bhutani sammoha. All living entities uh, become illusioned. Right? And then he's saying that sarge yanti parantapa. Sarge means, sarge yanti means the time of, at the time of giving birth. So actually see, all the living entities are born in illusion. So how is that? We may say that, okay, uh, you know, like for example, somebody has his birthday and he's a happy birthday, you know, to you. And uh, um, and sometimes we say happy birthday to ourselves. But if you see the tra sad truth is that, that uh, we were not happy on our birth birthday. The day I was born, I was crying. And of course, there is a joy that the new life is born. That joy is not taken away. But the fact is, birth in itself is not a very joyful experience. The mother is screaming in pain and, you know, the end result is also not so joyful. The new life has come in the world. And that new life is uh, not just a life, but, uh, you know, uh, which has come into the world that life can go on successfully, you know, out of the world. So if the parent practices devotional service and he shares the devotional service with the child, then the child can become, you know, the parent's liberator. So that is what Krishna, you know, allows us. But he's saying that Sarva Bhutani Sammoha Sarge Yanti. Yanti. So actually all the living being identities are born in illusion and because we are born in illusion we have to become liberated from the delusion and for becoming liberated from the delusion we need to move forward steadily. We need to take very small baby steps in our uh, bhakti life or spiritual life and as we keep on taking these baby steps then we will realize that you know we have uh, done so much in Krishna's service how amazing it is but we all are born in illusion. So now, if somebody might ask that, where is this illusion coming from? Right from birth, I'm in illusion. So Krishna is using two words over here. Sammoha and Dvanda Moha. And so what is the difference between this Sammoha and Dvanda Moha? Okay. So if you see that uh, uh, Ichha Dvesha Samutthena. Ichha means desire and Dvesha means hate. Okay. Ichha, Dvesha, Samutthena and this is the combination. Ichha and Dvesha ka combination. Ichha and Dvesha can be, uh, if you see, referring to many, many things. Ichha can refer to desire to enjoy, you know, separately from Krishna and Dvesha can be, you know, hatred for Krishna also. Right? You know, that why he is only the, you know, ultimate... Uh, uh, enjoyer and as such like you know okay. that way so generally we have Icha you know Icha means desire for that which we like and Dvesha which we have, which we don't like we have Dvesha for that so this Icha and Dvesha has been used many times in the Bhagavad Gita and if you look at even in the 7th chapter where Krishna is giving that knowledge about the Apur. He is giving the knowledge about himself. And uh, here Krishna is talking about his own position. So here Icha and Dvesha uh, refers not gen generically attraction and aversion, but when a person has a uh, desire or Icha to enjoy separately uh, from Krishna or uh, Dvesha for Krishna, that okay, why he is only the enjoyer. So those who are serving Krishna, accepting Krishna to be the enjoyer, samutthena, because of this Icha and Dvesh, like something we know we don't like something. So when we like something, we call it good and we don't like something, we call it bad. So even if you see, Prahlad Maharaj also said that, you know, when 
uh, when there is a separation from her lover, then we call it misery. But when there is, you know, Sanjo, yeah, when you meet that, you know, lover, then we call it as a pleasure. So, Viyog from my lover is misery. And Sanjog with my, uh, you know, a priya or united with something is we suffer. So then when we separated from whatever is desirable, then we suffer. So uh, that is why we, these two major ways actually we suffer. So uh, even another example, like, you know, you can say that um, I want to, I want uh, sweet. I want to eat sweet. And there is no sweet to eat. Then, you know, I suffer. And if you say the other way is that uh, mm. I don't want, you know, karela sabji. And that sabji is there. So that way also I will suffer because I don't like it. So when we don't get what we want, we get what we don't want. I think then we suffer. So it's like a tongue twister that... Um, um, we uh, when we don't get what we want and we get what we don't want, we suffer. So uh, uh, we start labeling things as bad or good, and that is why we so we label things even generally based on you know our likes and dislikes. Whatever I like, it is good. Whatever I don't like, it is bad. So he is saying that Icha Dvesha. Icha Dvesha is leaving, le leading to what? Dvanda Mohena. It is leading to duality and illusion. Right? And Dvanda Moha is the illusion of du duality. Right? So if you see in the purport also, no, Prabhupada says that bewildered by duality. But the overall you know, set of the world view is Icha and Dvesha, uh, that is called Sammoha. See, if you see the word Sammoha means Samyak Rupena. Moha means the complete illusion that is there. Uh, that is Sammoha. So, uh, what is the difference? There is a little foundational illusion. Just like, you know, if you see a person is going for a movie. Okay, he's watching the movie. That time the person forgets that, okay, you know, I am a spectator over here and I am watching the movie. And uh, uh, feels that, okay, you know, uh, I am only that hero. I am only that heroine. And then if the hero, you know, falls ill or he is beaten up by the goons, then, you know, this guy starts crying and all. And, uh, you know, what? he will try to participate in that whole movie as a hero or heroine. And then he will try to enjoy based on that identification. So within even the movie, there will be you know certain scenes and certain things which he might not even like. Okay. Or uh, uh, when uh, when when the hero beats the heroine, oh, sorry, when the hero beats the villain, we like it. But when the villain is beating the hero, then we don't like it. Right? So, what we don't like it, then that is why we are thinking, okay, you know, I don't like it. So, you know, this guy is not good. So, there is this point of Dwanda, good and bad, even within the movie also. So, Dwanda is based on Icha and Dvesha. And what we like and what we don't like. But this whole getting into the setup of Icha and Dvesha, and then, you know, like, I like this and I don't like this. Because of that, Dvanda Mohena. All these happen because of Dvanda Mohena. So, Sammoha uh, is first of all the desire that I want to watch the movie. And then when I start watching the movie, uh, watching the movie then certain things will happen which i like certain things i don't like certain things and if i like certain things then these things uh, are not into my sitting into my realm okay so then that's how you know just give me a minute okay
So, mm, sorry. So then uh, Krishna is saying that that is why all the living beings are born into an illusion. As such. So, and then he's saying that Sarva Bhutani Sammoham Sargayanti Parantapa. So, all these living entities, they are born in illusion on this material existence where they think of themselves as separate from Krishna. Now, when we are thinking ourselves separate from Krishna, then I will have Ichha, I will have Dvesh, Dvesh and Nafrat Karna. Okay. So, agar mujhe ye achha laga, to thik hai. You know, mujhe ye pasand hai. Aur agar mujhe ye achha nahi laga, to mein isko nafrat karti hai. So, I, I hate this thing. So, Krishna is saying that um, all these living entities are born in this illusion. And so, sometimes, you know, if you see now, that what is the connection? You might think that what is the connection between the 27th shloka and the 26th shloka? Where Krishna is saying that I know the past, present and future. Mujhe, uh, mujhe vartaman ka bhi pata hai, bhavishya ka bhi pata hai aur bhutkal ka bhi pata hai. Aur yaha pe Krishna is saying that, uh, you know, ichha dvesha samuttena. So Krishna was saying in the previous verse that he is free from illusion. Because he knows the past, present and future. And if you see, you know, these three verses, the 25th, uh, that Krishna is saying that I am not visible to anyone, I am not manifest to everyone. Because he reserves the right of not revealing himself to everyone, right? And in the 26th sloka is saying that I know everything, I know the past, present and future. And in the 27th sloka is saying that all the living entities are deluded. So here Krishna is very clearly differentiating between his position and the position of the living entity. Just as you know, we gave the example of the sun, uh, you know, uh, sun cloud. Uh, give me a minute. So we gave the example of the sun cloud and the person who is on the earth, you know, who is observing. So if I am a person who is observing on the earth and I am covered by the clouds, but the sun is not covered by the clouds. My vision is covered, right? So Krishna is like the sun and all the illusionary potencies are like the cloud. And all the living entities are like the person on the earth. They all are living entities and they are on it. So, the living entities for some time may feel that, you know, I am liberated like the cloud. You know, moving aside a little bit and then the person is starting to see. But the clouds are very much bigger. So, one cannot remove those clouds uh, by his own effort. Uh, it is not like, you know, those cobwebs, you know, in the room that, you know, you can remove them on your own. We cannot remove the cloud by some, you know, stick or some, you know, uh, uh, some jugglery or some, you know, magic something. We need to depend on the divine grace. So, if you see, uh, this, this shloka can be used to refer... Uh, to the origins and ultimately the question of origins uh, you know might come that how did we fall from the spiritual world how we originally came here that is a very much you know uh, that vexed question that is there that which is beyond the conception of time and space it is very difficult to understand within the conception of time and space and that is why Prabhupada is pressing over here the question, this question that children often, often gave, uh, that when a person is drowning in the ocean, he does not think about, you know, that, oh, how did I drown in the ocean and how did I feel, how did I fall down in this ocean? <coughs> but he is uh, thinking about how to get out of the ocean. He does not bother much that how did I fall into the ocean. So, still the point is Icha and Dvesha only. So, Ichha and Dvesha means what? Meri Ichha se hi I have come over here. 
because I wanted to enjoy separately from Krishna, I have come over here. Because at some point of time, I had a little hatred that why Krishna is only the enjoyer, I have fallen over here. And who is to be blamed? I myself am to be blamed for this. And that is why if you see uh, that, um, you know, that Adam's story also, you know, is there actually, but I won't go into too much uh, into the details of that, uh, of that Adam and Eve story. Because um, uh, if you see, the soul was very happy in the spiritual world with Krishna. But the soul has not experienced that separation from Krishna. And that is why the soul is des desiring to enjoy separately from Krishna. And that is how the soul comes here to the material world. The soul sometimes desires to serve in a way that is not possible in the spiritual world. For example, the soul becomes, you know, the Brahma in the, in this world and when the soul uh, comes here and because you know the, because this material world is the arena of maya after coming here the soul starts you know getting some lower desires also and then from the position of brahma the soul starts going down 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 so there are explanations like this so the soul has a free will the soul uh, you know uh, is free to do anything but the that Free will that is there, you know, means it has a freedom to act. And there is an arena to exercise that free will. That is the material world. And if there is no arena to exercise the free will, then there is no meaning of that free will. So Krishna, so the arena to exercise the free will is the spiritual world where we can freely choose Krishna. But if we do not choose to serve Krishna, if we choose to do something else, then there has to be an arena for that also. And that arena is the material world. And so even in this world also, we see that the logic doesn't lead to any absolute conclusion, especially when, you know, uh, with respect to behaviors, even in this material world. Also, we see that, you know, when uh, a boy, he, he falls in love with a girl. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, there are not always logical reasons why the boy has fallen in love with a girl or why the girl has fallen in love with a boy. And even when a boy and a girl, they are uh, breaking out, you know, they break up also with relationships, right? It may be very a specific behavior or some event which is leading to some, you know, disruption of their relationship. But it is not an exact science that because of this only they broke up. Because of this only this happened. Because of this, only this relationship broke and, you know, there are relationships, emotions also in general and not very precise. And that is why actually to sustain a relationship, one has to be very emotionally sharp. One has to be very emotionally alert to reciprocate properly with others and maintain that relationship in that way. Right? So the point actually I'm trying to say is that why the soul chooses to go apart from Krishna, we understand that. Just a, just a minute. Huh? So, he is saying that um, so uh, uh, why should the soul choose to you know go apart from Krishna? Uh, the soul has a free will. The soul uh, you know the soul has free will and the free will means the soul can use the free will which every 
uh, every way the soul wants to. And so the soul can choose to go away from Krishna. And Krishna is allowing also the soul to do that. That is how the soul becomes bonded in this material world. And that is why he is saying that Sarva Bhutani Sammoha Sarge Yanti Parantapaha All the living entities are born into this illusion in this particular way. Now one may wonder that in this illusion uh, you know uh, 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 one may wonder that is this illusion irreversible? Permanent? Is it that we have to always be in illusion? No, we can definitely become purified and we can become liberated. And again and again, Krishna will talk about this in the 8th chapter also we will be saying actually. But now the question may come up that if we go back to the spiritual world, what is the guarantee that we will not fall back? So, uh, in the commentary to the Govind Bhashya, uh, which is the commentary by the Vedanta Sutra, Angela Balde, Vidya Bhushan has uh, written the Govind Bhashya. Give me one minute. So, in his Govind Bhashya, uh, the last uh, aphorism of the Vedanta Sutra is Anavritti Shabda. And it, this is explained by different Acharya. Shila Prabhupada is explained Anavritti Shabda, you know, as uh, different sound vibrations. Uh, the, the uncovering of the consciousness will happen. So, if you see, Avaran means covering. Hai na? Avaran means covering and Anavritti is uncovering. Uh, uncovered. So, and Shabdat is the sound. So, uncovering of consciousness by the sound. So, ana, Anavritti can also, of course, mean very different, uh, something very different. Krishna has talked about, you know, Punaravriti no Arjuna. So, Punaravreno means to come back here again. And those living entities who come back to this material world, but anavritti means will not come back. Shabdat means said by scriptures. And if you see, Shila Baltev Vidya uh, has said that the scripture is declaring that, that there will be no return here. One will not return to this material existence. So he said the living entities who are attaining liberation, the living entities will not return to the material existence. Why? Because many reasons. Uh, one he said that, one reason he said that, uh, first of all, it is scriptural promise. Yani shabda praman hai ye. Scriptures have said this. Scriptures give you know absolute truth from you know Krishna. And then he further says that actually Krishna also loves his devotees. And Krishna is bhaktavatsa. So, Krishna will ensure that those devotees who truly loved him and have rejected the places of this material world, for his sake, he will never reject them. And he will always hold them very tight embrace and keep them ever with them and he will never let them fall into this material existence. And that is why he, he further also says that um, actually the devotees of the Lord, they love the Lord. And the devotees have sacrificed everything for the sake of the Lord. And once they attain this object of love, and this object of love is so much complete and fulfilling, why will these pure devotees uh, ever want to come back to the material world? So originally, we did not know how horrible the life can be, you know, separate from Krishna. Okay, then after returning back to Krishna, it is not that constantly we will be remembering this material existence. But once we are back to Krishna, we know that if at all sometimes the desire comes up, then immediately Krishna will give the embrace of the consequences. He will say, okay, you know, you remember last time 
you did ichha and dwesha and you went down right and it will be like no i don't want to go again i don't want to go through it again because of having that experience because of that reassurance of the lord because of the nature of the love of the lord for the devotees and because of the nature of uh, the love of the devotees for krishna this can be guaranteed or it <coughs> guaranteed that we will not come back so that is the ultimate liberation sarva bhutani sammoham so though all of us are very deluded and all of us can be liberated and once you liberated we will not come back again to this material world this is what krishna is saying in this particular uh, shloka and then uh, in the next shloka what is he saying is he is saying that is there anyone who is free from this delusion of dualities and is qualified to manifest devotion to all to krishna at all and then that is why you know krishna is answering in the next shloka he is saying that very important shloka is saying that yesham pantat gat paapam jananam punya karmanam vedvand moha nirmukta bhajante maam dridha vratah he is saying that yesham pantat gat paapam one whose sins are completely eradicated that is you know right from you can say seed form it has been completely eradicated and then further he is saying that janana punya karmanam those who have performed punya for janana for those people who have performed punya when they have performed punya and you know shri prabhupada is also explaining in this life as well as the previous life also you know they have performed and then te dwanda moha nirmukta they will become free from this uh, dwanda and moha okay and then he is saying that bajante maam dridvata so those will become free from uh, moha or dwanda then they will start worshiping me with determination so saying jananam punya karmanam one who has acted piously in his previous lifetime and in this present lifetime also and then te dwanda moha nirmuktam one who is free from when the dualities of delusion bajante maam dridavrata such people engage in my devotional service dridavrata dridta se आगे बढ़ते हैं यू नो डिटर्मिनेशन दृढ़ता सो व्हाट इज द पॉइंट ऑफ दिस वर्स वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इफ यू सी इन द 14th श्लोका यू नो कृष्णा सेड दैट इफ यू नो मी यू कैन बी लिबरेटेड देन इन दिस 25th श्लोका आल्सो ही इज सेइंग दैट नो वन नोज मी एंड देन ही इज सेइंग दैट आई एम नॉट एन इल्यूजन द लिविंग एंटिटीज आर एन इल्यूजन so how can they come out of illusion so krishna is telling over here that if they give up papa then when they give up papa then what do they gain they gain punya and then they come to a position where they will do my bhakti very steadily steadily means dridavrata very determination say praying morning wake up in the morning early chant and you know read and do devotional service and book distribution and seva in the temple and deity worship and hearing bhagavatam and reading shri bhagavatam so here krishna is talking about how one can become a very serious steady devotee so for that we can so that we uh, uh, see because i want to become a serious and steady devotee for that i have to give up my simple activity and do some pious activity so इन प्रिंसिपल सिद्धांत में अगर हम देखते हैं तो डिवोशन सर्विसेस कैन बी स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम एनी मोड यू नो इवन अ ड्रंकर्ड पर्सन ही इज ड्रंक एंड डिवोट इज अ डूइंग कीर्तन एंड द पर्सन स्टार्ट डांसिंग एंड सिंगिंग दैट पर्सन इज ऑल्सो डूइंग सम डिवोशन सर्विस बाय सम वे चैंटिंग दी होली नेम्स इज यूरिंग यू नो द होली नेम बट 
that person who is in drunken state every day he cannot wake up and chant and do mangala aarti right and uh, if one has to do that then bhajante maam dridavrata like you know uh, every day little bit of bhajan you know chaturvida bhajante maam then in the 17th uh, sorry in the 16th shloka he said that chaturvida bhajante maam four kinds of people come to me and then he is saying that out of those four people who are the best he is saying that jo gyani hai wo sabse shreshth hai the gyani is the best because the gyani will practice steadily since he is not motivated by anything that is material but uh, is but he is motivated on the platform of knowledge the gyani is always motivated on the platform of knowledge so krishna is saying if one wanted to become steady one has to become free from sin one has to do piety so as devotees we know that there are regulative principles and we know that these regulative principles are there and uh, uh, and we uh, if we commit sinful activities what will be the consequences and uh, these regulative principles certain we are avoiding certain you know uh, things so these consequences when we avoid we will move forward and when we practice devotional service by that way te dwanda moha nirmukta actually dwanda moha is always there hai na dwanda aur moha hamesha rahega duality and delusion will uh, always be there duality and delusion will always be there so uh, he is saying that uh, when dwanda is far far crippling then it is in ignorance or passion in ignorance the person does not like anything which is uh, you know connected with you know the mode of goodness or transcendence uh, it likes only those things which are of ignorance or somebody might like to you know smoke or drink or take drugs or he might he might like to do violence or something so in goodness also there is dwanda this is good this is bad but a dwanda in goodness is much closer to reality than dwanda in ignorance so duality is always there uh, uh, with the three modes of material nature goodness passion and ignorance and ultimately we come to you know a transcendental dwanda transcendence dwanda you can say which goes up completely uh, that is when we attain liberation so krishna is saying here that one keeps doing piety keeps avoiding sin then gradually the effect of low mood decreases and then the effect of low mood decreases then one becomes more and more situated in goodness and then eventually from goodness one can you know come to the transcendental platform and in goodness and transcendent one can practice bhakti very steadily with drid vrata he can and krishna is talking about you know uh, here uh, krishna is not talking about you know initiating bhakti yoga but that has already he has spoken in the 16th shloka he is talking about you know situating one's self in bhakti steadily uh, for that one one has to get rid of the sinful activities and uh, 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 and to go steadily in the spiritual life uh, to the extent we will you know come to the sin to that extent our bhakti will be you know uh, disturbed actually the scum to sin in itself is a break in bhakti agar aapne paap kiya hai to fir aapka break ho gaya hai bhakti mein right <clears throat> but along with that also before we come to sin there is a lot of temptation and after that there is lamentation so it is like you know if we are going on the level of you know consciousness there is a fall but before the fall there is temptation oh should i do it should i not do it i want to do it no i will not do it for that you know the whole hesitation is there and after doing oh why did i do it you know i should not have done that i'm so fallen you know so there is lamentation and what happens that we will go a little bit and again the same temptation 
So it does not allow our consciousness to go steady. What to speak of going upward? Just steadily, it has to keep falling down again and again. So when we start avoiding sinful activities with determination, we get the we let the process of this bhakti work. And our heart is illumined with bhakti. When we come in contact with any devotee, so wherever we associate with devotees who are very serious practitioners of bhakti, then in their association also, we get bhakti. Our heart becomes illumined. Uh, so, you know, I always give this example that uh, if the wood is wet, uh, then the contact of the devotees does not cause the wood to catch fire. But a little part of the wood that is dry may catch fire. But if the wood has to catch fire, then the wood has to be dried. And uh, it does not have to fall again into the water. Or it is, does not have to fall again into the pit of sin, the rapturification. That has to be avoided. So when our heart is in tamaguna, it is like the wood which is wet. And when the wood is wet, we really can't make much, you know, steady progress in spiritual practices. And that is why these two things, giving up sin and doing piety, that helps our heart to become, uh, come to the mode of goodness. Then bhakti can go very forward. We can go in bhakti very steadily. So bhakti can be started at any mode, you know, from Tamagun also it can be started. But it is important that uh, we remain grid, we remain steady. And that is why if you see Prabhupada's purpose is also actually saying that, that if one wants to become uh, liberated, then he must render services. Mat sevam dwaram ahur. He is mentioning in this particular that Mahat uh, sevam dwaram ahur vimuktena. But one who associates the materialistic people with the path of leading the darkest region of existence. Tamo dwaram yoshitam. He is saying over here. All the duties of the Lord transfers is to recover the conditioned souls from the delusion. And uh, that's that's the actually, you know, way that Prabhupada is saying that association of devotees is so very important. So now uh, Krishna has spoken of these three types of you know devotees. In the next that, you know, uh, who are the Sakama Bhaktas who worship him and uh, you know. Uh, he describes the fourth type of Sakam Bhakta who desires liberation. So he says that ahead Jaramaranam Mokshaya Mama Ashita Yantite Te Brahmatad Vidu Krishtam Adhyatmam Karma Chakilam Intelligent persons who are endeavoring for liberation from old age and death take refuge in me in devotional service. They are actually Brahman because they entirely know everything about the transcendental activities. So this is the 29th shloka. So he, he is saying over here that Jara Marana. He is saying that Jara Marana Moksha. Those who understand the miseries of material existence, Jara Marana, old age, death, Moksha, to get liberation from that, what do they do? Maam Ashrita, they take shelter of me. And then he is saying that Yatanti Ye, they start uh, doing, they start endeavoring, you know, uh, this one right off. Yeah. Hmm. So say they start, what do they start? They start endeavoring. So then, okay, what will happen then? Te Brahma Tad Vidu Krishnam. They are actually Brahma and they know everything. And Adhyatmam Karma Chakhilam. They know everything about the transcendent activities. So Krishna has introduced two words over here. One is Brahma and one is Adhyatma. And Arjuna will ask in the next verse, what does this mean? So uh, this is, you know, another category of devotees that uh, uh, Krishna is talking about and uh, different kinds of devotees who come to him. So Krishna has talked about four kinds of people, you know, in the 16th shloka, Artho, Arthati, Jigyasu, and then 
Gyanu Mishra devotees and Moksha Kami Bhaktas in the 29th Loka. And in this, he is talking about the Moksha Kami, like who are aspiring for uh, liberation. And uh, in the next chapter also, he will be speaking about the Yoga Mishra. So the point here is that Krishna is talking about the different category of devotees. There are uh, and there are five different category of devotees which has been talked about. The two are Sakam, the, uh, the two are Moksha Kami, and the Moksha Kami can be Jnana Mishra, but is commonly primarily with you know intellectual conception on the path of uh, yoga, yoga Mishra. And that person will be coming from the background of his yogic practice. But uh, they all come to Maam Ashita. They come and they surrender to Krishna. And they make spiritual advance. So now Krishna will introduce one more term over here. So one more set of term in this particular verse is there. Like, you know, the Moksha Kami Bhakta. And then he is saying that uh, in the next shloka he is saying that this is the last shloka. Okay, give this. Sadi Bhuta di Devam Ma Sadi Yagna Chaye Vidu Praya Prayana Kale Chapi Chamate Mamate Vidur Yukta Chetasa. The translation Those in full consciousness of me who know me, the Supreme Lord, to be the governing principle of the material manifestation. Of the demigods, uh, of the demons, and of all methods of sacrifice, can understand and know me, the personal supreme personality of God, and even at the time of death. So, uh, Krishna is introducing three terms over here. He has said over here that. So Adi Bhuta, Adi Devam, and Sir Adi Ad, uh, Adi Yagnam. So you know, uh, and Prayana Kale uh, Apichama, those who understand me to be the Adi Bhuta, Adi Deva, and Adi Yagna, such people they will be very much well situated even at the time of uh, death, you know. Uh, prayana Kale. So Prayana Kale, you know, is if you see. Uh, that person who has, you know, attained even Brahma Nirvana. In the second chapter also, he has spoken about, uh, you know, this uh, Prayana Kala. And uh, also here also, you know, Anta Kala and Prayana Kala. Both are the same thing, actually. And Krishna is saying that those who know me to be the ultimate truth, they will be Yukta Chetasa. Yukta Chetasa means the mind always will be situated in me at the time of death. They'll be always engaged in me. All the time they're thinking of me. So if you see, Krishna is telling that his position is supreme. It is not revealed to everyone. But if somebody wants to know him, then they have to practice steady devotional service. And steady devotional service, when they can practice, they when they give up sinful activities and do some pious activities and become determined in devotional service. By that, they will understand all these things uh, they will understand okay who is Brahman. They will understand Adhyatma. And they will understand that Krishna is the ultimate reality. And they will understand that Krishna is only uh, Adi Bhuta, Adi Deva, Adi Yagna. And such people, you know, they can be situated at the time of death very steadily. And they will attain liberation also. So, uh, and now if you see, uh, there are three sections in this chapter. Right? The first section, how the absolute is uh, absolute truth is all pervading and he underlines everything. And the second section spoke about how every everybody and whatever they do is, you know, in some relation with the absolute truth and uh, they are obeying him, they are serving him with, you know, uh, something and they are connected with the absolute truth. But in the third thing, he says that when we surrender to the absolute truth, when we understand the absolute as the absolute truth, and when we understand Krishna to be the absolute truth, then we attain supreme consciousness or the absolute aus uh, auspiciousness 
विच इज युक्त चेतस ऑल द टाइम श्रवणम कीर्तनम विष्णु स्मरणम इज कमिंग ऑल द टाइम टू अस सो दिस इज हाउ एक्चुअली सेवेंथ चैप्टर एंड दैट अगेन यू नो सी एंड द सेवेंथ चैप्टर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंगली इज एंडिंग विथ युक्त चेतस दे आर माइंड एंगेज इन मी and the eighth chapter will start only that how to always think about krishna and krishna is giving also that how do you always you know think about me and uh, if you see uh um the seventh chapter speaks about you know uh, the substance of this conviction fantastically it is speaking about the substance of this conviction and what is yukta chetasah you know my why how should i keep my mind constantly engaged in uh, remembering krishna serving krishna serving the devotees of krishna so dear devotees uh, thank you so much uh, i rest my speech over here for the seventh chapter and uh, soon tomorrow i should be actually giving you all even the eighth chapter uh, explanation that is the first five or six shlokas i'll be explaining because the first five six shlokas are so very important from the eighth chapter so thank you very much shila prabhupada ki jai gaur bhakta vrind ki jai hari krishna hari bol